solid comme le rock. Unforgettable. Frontliner. Whether it's the water issue, the Medicare issue, more recently the uh, uh, electricity issue, her efforts have impacted upon the shop floor of the average QP member. Dynamic. To the woman who can bring thousands of people to their feet. Powerhouse. Judy is a role model, period. For all of us, men and women. Driver. Charisma. So at family get-togethers, most people get together and say, you know, how are you? How's the job going? I like to say to Judy, brought any big, greedy multinationals to their knees recently? Dance till dawn. Judy, Judy, Judy. That's a woman full of piss and vinegar. Motivator. Has she been involved in demonstrations? The question is, has she ever missed a demonstration? Spirit. Unique hairstyles. She's very colorful, lots of hair, big earrings, and uh, Judy's trademark smile. Even then, she was famous for being very militant. Une grande leader. Shit kicker. Sympathique. Living vortex where she goes, things are shaken up, and things are moving. A uh, passion for social justice, a passion for fighting on behalf of working people, a passion for health care and, and all of the issues that affect our country. To every privatizer, to Gordon Campbell, Mike Harris, and Ralph Klein, they better know that when they take on the Canadian Union of Public Employees, they take on the fight of their lives. Judy Darcy was 18 months old when her family emigrated to Canada from Denmark. One of four children, she grew up in Sarnia, Ontario. Even as a teenager, Judy made an impression. Judy was in high school uh, hosting uh, the evening of entertainment and she came out in a, a really gaudy uh, micro mini skirt and uh, yellow plastic knee boots and, and the audience cheered for her. They, they were crazy about her and then I thought, wow, she's really got just an unbelievable uh, amount of leadership ability to be able to pull that one off. It was the 60s. Martin Luther King, civil rights, the Vietnam War and peace demonstrations. Judy was an activist and a feminist and an undercover protester at a Miss Canadian University's beauty contest. Judy, uh, one of the semi-finalists, stood forward as we had all planned ahead of time, but at a much surprise to the other contestants and the judges to protest the way women were treated. That was a real test of fire. Judy worked part-time in the University of Toronto Library. That's where she learned about the power of unions. CUPE fought and won a health and safety battle for the non-union workers. After going full-time, she became a union steward before her probation was up. Two years later, she was elected president of CUPE 1230, in time to take on Pierre Trudeau's wage controls. Good evening. Tomorrow, the Government of Canada will ask Parliament for the authority to impose severe restraints upon rising prices and income. I ask them to apply the Federal Price and Income Guidelines to all provincial and municipal public service salaries. The first local to take on the fight against the controls was the University of Toronto Library Local of CUPE, of which Judy was the president. I came down to one of their strike meetings and I was so impressed with her leadership and the energy that she engendered in that local and also the fact that it was a multicultural group like I had never seen before in CUPE with women in saris getting up making radical statements against the library administration. It was wonderful to see. When Judy moved on to the Metro Toronto Reference Library, she again took up the fight to better women's wages. We were involved in um, a heavy-duty set of bargaining. The team and I eventually came up with a what we thought was a, a reasonable settlement. We took it back to the local and lo and behold, there was Judy at the meeting standing up saying, no, this doesn't go far enough, we need to get, we need to and we can get more. And she was right. Uh, we did. and. 
It took a three-day strike, though. Judy was the strike coordinator, and uh, she led this amazing demonstration on the day they walked out. She had everybody on the third floor get together, start down the stairs, start singing Solidarity Forever, uh, picking up the people on the second floor, picking up people on the first floor, out the front doors, and we set up the picket line. It was really amazing. During the next two decades, whenever there was a fight for workers' rights, Judy was there. She became president of the Toronto CUPE Council. She ran for the federal NDP and attacked free trade. In 1989, Judy beat several candidates to become CUPE National Secretary Treasurer. Two years later, when Jeff Rose stepped down, convention delegates made her CUPE's second woman president. Judy had often challenged Grace Hartman from the convention floor mics. Now, she followed in her footsteps. Women's issues, the peace movement, and equality issues came to the forefront. Judy is one of those leaders who lead by actions. She not only talks the talk, she walks the talk on issues such as employment equity, uh, same-sex benefits, anti-racism, workers' rights issues. Judy has always been there as the strong ally and she doesn't shy away from controversial issues. Instead of spending billions to bomb the people of Iraq, what about waging war on the HIV AIDS pandemic in Africa? What about waging war on the atrocious state of health care for Aboriginal people in Canada? It's time to wage war on poverty, on homelessness, on racism, on inequality, on injustice, no to war on Iraq. Walking picket lines and fighting to keep services public, Judy has worked to build a stronger union. That has always meant keeping our members strong at the bargaining table. Judy has compris that in our negotiations, we had to keep the cap on our priorities, on our values. We had to keep the cap on our priorities. And for that, as a leader, she led us to des discussions pour mener à l'élaboration de politiques claires, des politiques qui nous ont guidés dans l'action, pour ne pas concéder à nouveau. Et là-dessus aussi, Judy, je te remercie pour cette clarté, pour le, le focus, l'objectif que tu as toujours gardé, que tu as maintenu pour nous tous. Judy's leadership brought better wages and working conditions, and it brought unorganized workers into CUPE, growing the union to half a million strong. Judy's leadership has been key in bringing the labor movement closer to coalitions and other people's movements. We always knew when CUPE came to the table that they would bring resources, creativity, and true commitment to the work of the coalition. And Judy always made it clear that her coalition includes Quebec. You have remarked tout au long de ta présidence, c'est ton ouverture d'esprit pour le Québec. Puis tu as compris les Québécois et les Québécoises. Puis on était capable de faire progresser ce grand syndicat-là dans une dynamique nationale, parce qu'on est quand même un syndicat pan-canadien, puis on a besoin de la solidarité des travailleurs, des travailleuses et du Québec et du reste du pays pour faire avancer notre cause. Et tu étais formidable là-dessus. Judy just didn't work with CUPE members. Her sisters and brothers included all social activists. We were right there together fighting a whole bunch of important fights against water privatization in Vancouver and Toronto, against the export of water from Gisborne Lake, uh, for health care, for steering the Romano uh, Commission in the right direction, on the GATS, the General Agreement on Trade and Services, on trade, on NAFTA. We've, we've been there together and Judy's been there for us and I want to say that the Council of Canadians owes Judy Darcy and CUPE a lot. Talk is cheap. Everybody's talking like Medicare is a sacred program. We want their signatures on the line. It's public and private sector workers. It's woodworkers. It's police. It's hospital workers. It's marine workers. All saying the same thing to this government. Enough is enough is enough. We don't fight the deficit by creating more unemployment. And we gave them very detailed and very practical proposals about how they could do that. And they simply wouldn't listen. The money has to come out. The money has to come out. The money has to come out. It's fundamentally unfair to say that we're going to respect contracts with bankers, we're going to respect contracts with business people, we're going to respect contracts with doctors, but frontline cleaners and secretaries and healthcare workers somehow don't have equal rights.
building private hospitals, owning hospitals privately is not cheaper and better for taxpayers. It costs more in the long run and it's the thin edge of the wedge for taking over hospitals completely. CUPE's high public profile has been a hit with members. Judy Darcy has the ability to capture the media like no other Labour leader in our country. It certainly gives our rank and file members from coast to coast the opportunity to see our national president out there on the front lines fighting for our issues. There's a crisis, our president's there. Judy travelled over 100,000 miles a year during her term in national office. Connecting with members was the best part of her job. Judy has been on picket lines, on rallies and protests from one end of the country to the other. She's been there to involve herself in bargaining when that's been necessary on behalf of the members. She's there at every division convention. She's there at the dance till the last dance is danced. And that's really important to our members that she's been so accessible. Coming from an activist role herself, she understood the importance that rank and file activists make to the labor movement. And while yes, we have to have leaders at the top who are articulate and committed and energetic, the labor movement doesn't make change just by speeches, it makes change by energized activists. And Judy was very successful in energizing activists all across the country, including within QB. And that made a difference to QB and it made a difference to the labor movement, it made a difference to our country. So she's combined organizing strategies, bargaining strategies with political strategies. And that's given the workers in QB a sense that we can be victorious. Thank you.